The conditional statements that we've been looking at allow you to say, if something is true, then do something else. And that's fine, but what if we want to do that something over and over and over until our condition is not true? That is almost the same thing, but instead of saying if, we'll say while. And of course, we're going to get deeper into this. But essentially, a loop is the same thing as a condition, except you do the code in the curly braces over and over and over as long as the condition is true. So you check the condition, you do something, you check the condition again. If it's still true, you do something again over and over until the condition's false. It's a great way to do things repeatedly, and we're going to look at some basics of loops. In the next session, we're going to get into data structures where they become really useful. So we're going to kind of play with just some toy learning examples in this lesson. So we have a structured HTML document here. We're going to add the script tag to the body. And we're going to put our code in here. And let's start just by, say, we're going to print all of the perfect squares uh, from 1 to 10. OK? Uh, so we need to have some numbers. Now, we could just do document.write 1 times 1, document.write 2 times 2, document.write, you get the idea. So this is really inefficient because one, say we wanted to change it from document write to alert, then we'd have to change it as ever many times as we have. Maybe instead of doing just one through 10, we want to do one through a thousand, then we'd have to write a bunch more lines. And in general, you don't want to duplicate code if you don't have to. You don't want to use the same line over and over and over again. Instead, you want to write that line once and just have that line executed multiple times. So we have the general idea. We want to document.write something times itself. But we don't want to just repeat it many times like this. So let's keep that one example. And let's just run that so we can see what it looks like. If we reload this, there we can see there's our one. Uh, if we left in the other ones, we get one, and then four, and then nine. There's no spacing, which is why they're all together like that. But we have one squared, two squared, three squared. OK, so instead of repeating all of our numbers, we kind of want to have some variable x. And we're going to do x times x. OK, how do we get that to happen over and over and over again? Well, we know we want to say if x is less than or equal to 10, then we're going to do this. And we'll start with our variable x equal to 1. But that's only going to do it once, right? x is equal to 1. x will be less than 10. And then we'll write x squared. And that works. But how do we get it to happen many times? So first, let's do some formatting. We'll put in a br tag there so our lines will get broken. OK, we need this to repeat multiple times. Now, I told you, you could just say while. And what that's going to do is the same thing as an if, except after it's done the code in the curly braces, it comes back up and checks the condition again. And if the condition is still true, it does what's in the curly braces and then checks it again. Now, if we just think through this, where we kind of pretend we're the computer, we set x equal to 1. And then we say, is 1 less than or equal to 10? It is. So we'll write 1 times 1. We'll write a break, and we'll come up and check it again. Is 1 less than 10? It is. And x is always going to be equal to 1, so it will always be less than 10. And that gets in what we call an infinite loop. It will just go over and over and over again without changing. Um, this is a good way to crash your browser. I'm going to try it and see what happens. Um, and what we see here, I've got this kind of ball of death. Uh, that's because it keeps trying to load the page. If I try to stop, it's not working. Um, so there we go. Good way to crash people's browsers. Let's stop that. All right, I secretly quit my browser and restarted it. Um, and I made that an if so it won't crash. So we do want that to be while, but obviously we have to change x. So x is going to be 1. 1 is less than or equal to 10. So we'll print 1 times 1. We'll print our break. And then we want x to go up to 2. There's a couple ways to do this. You can say x 
equals x plus 1. This line is enough to blow a lot of people's minds. It kind of freaks them out because you have x on both sides. So what I want you to do is think like the computer, because here's what the computer does. It says I'm going to set x equal to whatever is on the right-hand side. It doesn't know what that is. It says x is going to get equal to whatever's on the right-hand side. Okay, but I don't know what the value is on the right-hand side because there's a variable. So let's ignore everything on the left-hand side of the equals. I'm just going to look at this section I have highlighted and let's calculate what that is. It's x plus 1. What's x? Well, x is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And so this whole thing gets replaced with 2. And then the computer says, oh, x gets set equal to 2. So you've got to look only at one side of the equal sign at once. You always evaluate what's on the right side first until it's turned into a number. And then you set the thing on the left-hand side equal to that number. And that hopefully will alleviate any confusion. Now this should work for us and not crash the browser. If we reload our page, there we get our list of perfect squares. Another way to do this, so a shorthand for x equals x plus 1 is just x plus plus. The two things mean exactly the same thing, but you see this much more often and it's a much easier shorthand to have. So if we try that and reload, everything works fine. And we could change this. We could say, let's make it perfect cubes instead. Reload. That works fine. We could make it go up to 40. That works fine. So there we go. That's the basics of having a loop. Now what we have here is a really common structure for a loop. We have our variable set equal to some starting value. We're checking a certain condition and then we're incrementing that value at the end. If that's the structure of your loop, there's actually a shorthand for this called a for loop. So I'm going to put that underneath. Let's comment this out and I'm going to show you a new kind of comment. This is a multi-line comment. Um, so the slash and the star begins the comment and everything is commented out until you get a star and a slash. So I've commented out that block and what I'm going to do here is another block that's exactly the same, uh, just a different kind of syntax. Okay. So I'm going to start with the word for. This is called a for loop. And then I start by initializing my variable. So variable x equals 1. Then I put the condition, say x is less than or equal to 30. And then I say what to do at the end of the loop, x plus plus. Those are separated by semicolons. So this is done before you start. This is the condition you check. And after going through the curly bracketed code every time, you do this line. So here we can just do document.write x times x. We'll leave it as squares. Document.write the vr tag. And that's it. Our x plus plus will automatically happen after that last line is executed. So if we take a look here, we can see that we get our perfect squares all the way up to 30 squared, which is 900. It's up to you which one of these you use. It doesn't really matter. It's a, really an issue of preference. Um, I'll mix them. Sometimes you don't have this kind of structure with an initialization, a comparison, and an increment, uh, in which case it makes sense to use a while loop. If you do have that structure, you can choose if you want to use a for or a while. And let's do one more extension of this. So here we have our loop. We're printing our squares. Let's say we're actually, instead of this, we'll call this square and we'll store the squares x times x. And let's say we only want to print this if our squares are, say, divisible by 3. Then we could put an if statement here. We'll fill in that condition. and then do our printing. So for example, if we want to see if our squares are divisible by 3, we would say if square, and here's a probably a new piece of syntax for you. This is mod, the percent sign, 3 equals 0. What that means is if you divide square by 3, is it an even number or does it have a remainder? If you remember doing remainders back when you were doing division. Basically, this says is it evenly divisible by 3 if so, print these out. And if we try that, 
here we get all of our perfect squares that are also multiples of three. Okay, so you can nest ifs, you can nest loops if you want to, that those can get very big very fast. There's some basics on the loops, but as I said in the next lesson, we're gonna get into data structures where loops are really gonna show their power.